If there's a Cinderella horse in the classic, it's this horse, Wild Again. He's never run against the likes of Slew of Gold, but his owners have put up a record sum, $360,000 in supplemental money to make him eligible. Bill Allen is one of those owners, and I guess the obvious question is, why for a horse that's 30 to 1 on the morning line? Well, obviously, we don't think the horse should be 30 to 1 on the morning line and probably will not go off at 30 to 1. He's been long odds in all of the three races that he's run in this year, but the three races that he's won of importance have been one-fifth off the track record in two of those races and broke the track records in one of them by five lengths of Oak Lawn Handicap. And he's beat some of the best horses in the United States, and we've been waiting to run against a slew of gold on a, a California track rather than going to New York to meet him. Horse of the Year was on the line for the leading older horse in the country, Slew of Gold, who was sent off at 3-5, to five, even though it was known he was suffering from a quarter crack in a hoof and might not have been 100%. A pace setter for him, Mugga T, was also in the field. Second choice was the Preakness winner, Gate Dancer, easy to spot with his trademark earmuffs. And don't forget the long shot wild again in the $3 million classic. They're in the gate. In the Breeders' Cup Classic in Muggatee, he's put right to the whip from the gate. Up to take the lead, he's bearing out now as they pass the stands the first time. Here's Precisionist to join him, and in between horses, it's wild again. Two lengths back to Desert Wine, he's settled in the fourth. And the big horse, Slew of Gold, is off the rail, and he's racing fifth by four lengths. Track Baron is now racing in sixth, Canadian Factor toward the inside. Gate Dancer is the trailer. He's about 12 lengths off the lead. We've got a three-ply battle for the lead around the turn. And Wild again emerges with the lead. Precisionist on the outside. Muggatee toward the rail. The first quarter, a snappy 22 and 3 fifths seconds. They enter the back stretch. Wild again battles it out and takes the lead now by three quarters of a length. The half and 45 and 3. Precisionist pressures the pacemaker from the outside. Toward the inside, it's Muggatee now. He's dropped back third. A gap of four lengths to Desert Wine racing in fourth. Slew of Gold is still fifth. He's settled into fifth place now, and he's beginning to move up on the outside. A gap of four to Track Baron. Gate Dancer is second to last with a half a mile to run. And Canadian Factor is far behind as the field heads for the far turn. Three quarters in one, ten, and three. And Slew of Gold now. He's charging on the outside up to engage the leader. Wild again. It's wild again with the lead. Slew of Gold. Cordero board attacks now with three furlongs to go. Those two are matching stride for stride. Here comes Track Baron. He's putting in his run. And Gate Dancer, he's in full stride now. And he swings wide for the final quarter mile. On the inside, Wild again is game. And he's holding on to the lead by a head. Slew of gold is right at his neck. Here comes Gate Dancer on the outside there in the final furlong. today he was third there was clearly some contact between the three horses in the stretch wild again on the rail slew a gold between horses gate dancer on the outside and slew a gold took the worst of it jockey angel cordero jr explained the incident to the stewards but the last eight to the mile, he just got bounced around both sides. The inside horse kept going out, and then the, last, the second horse started coming in at the end. And we made a lot of contact, and I could do nothing about it. He was just bouncing around back and forth. Thank you, sir. The stewards deliberated for more than 10 minutes before reaching their decision. The question was whether the first place finisher wild again on the rail or the horse who finished second, Gate Dancer on the outside, would be held to blame for bumping slew a goal. Finally, it was decided that Gate Dancer was primarily to blame for the bumping. He was disqualified from second to third, and the gamble of Wild Again's owners had paid off. The masterful ride of Pat Day on the lead would live on in racing history, and the Breeders' Cup had been established as racing's championship day. One of the great joys of horse racing is to sit around and debate who is the greatest racehorse of all time. Well, many would say Secretariat, of course. His dominating performance in the 1973 Belmont Stakes to complete the Triple Crown 
is one of the greatest moments in the history of sports. Now, the Breeders' Cup came too late for Secretariat's racing career, but nevertheless, in 1986, his name went into the record books thanks to his magnificent daughter, Lady Secret. In the 1986 distaff, all eyes were on Lady Secret, who had won nine races that year going into the Breeders' Cup. At Saratoga in the Whitney, Lady Secret had no trouble with the sloppy track and easily beat a strong field, including Colts. Then it was on to the Masquet at Belmont, where the gray mare pulled away to win it by seven lengths. Next up, the ruffian at a mile and an eighth, and the results would be the same, an impressive eight-length victory. But in the Beldame, contested at the distaff length of a mile and a quarter, Lady Secret had to hold off weaker challengers to win. Was she beatable? Let's find out by looking back at the 1986 Breeders' Cup Distaff. They're in the gate, and they're off. And Lady Secret comes away running with the lead. Twilight Ridge is there toward the inside. Franz Valentine in between horses. Shy Wing on the outside, outstandingly toward the rail as they pass us for the first time. And it's the gray daughter of Secretariat taking the field past the stands in front by length and a half. And Franz Valentine to prompt the early pace from second. On the outside at Shy Wing, outstandingly saving ground toward the rail. Twilight Ridge is in between horses along with Magnificent Lindy. She's up close, only three lengths off the lead. Then farther back, Classy Cathy and Paradis is the trailer. And Lady Secret opens up now. Lady Secret getting clear by four and a half as they make their way to the back stretch. Fans Valentine is now masked for more run. Outstandingly is now third toward the rail. On the outside, Twilight Ridge is racing fourth. 23 flat for the quarter, 46 and one for the half mile as they continue their run up the back stretch. Pat Day is nursing Lady Secret on a five and a half length lead. Franz Valentine on the outside is a distant second toward the inside. It's outstandingly third. Twilight Ridge is racing in fourth position. Shy Wing, Classy Cathy is now launching her bid and moves through toward the inside. Magnificent Lindy is now eight links off the lead. Paradise trails, and they're getting closer to the Iron Lady. It's Lady Secret now. Her lead's been cut to three and a half lengths. Outstandingly second now toward the inside. Friends Valentine and Twilight Ridge. But it is Lady Secret who puts it in another gear as they turn for home. She leads by five at the top of the stretch. Outstandingly second toward the inside is now set down for the drive. Franz Valentine on the outside third, and they're coming to the final furlong. Lady Secret in front by four. Franz Valentine, outstandingly classy Kathy, and here is a brilliant champion. Lady Secret, another flawless performance. Lady Secret turned in an awesome display to win it wire to wire. When the gates opened, jockey Pat Day wasted no time getting his talented mare to take the early lead. She led the field as the horses passed the grandstand for the first time and never looked back. On the turn toward the back stretch, Lady Secret opened up a commanding four and a half length lead. Then with just an eighth of a mile left, she turned the race into a rout. That magnificent performance in the Breeders' Cup Distaff earned Lady Secret Horse Racing's highest honor, Horse of the Year. And uh, keep his horse out of trouble. And they're off. Demons be gone. Away quickly from between horses. Now there goes Leo Castellio on the inside, though Capote grabs the early lead past the stands for the first time. From between horses on the line, charging up to get command, Capote along the inside is second, and on the outside, that's Candy's Gold Racing third. In the middle of the track, no more flowers, up fourth. Bent twice is fifth, masterful advocate from between horses sixth. There goes Leo Castelli bullying his way between horses seventh. Masterful advocate, in fact, almost went out. War is in trouble on the inside, around the first turn. Capote leads it by a length. 
Staple made on the line into second position by two. Candy's gold on the outside, third by a head. Along the inside, that's Leo Castelli with Jacinto Vasquez in the the Irons in fourth position. War regaining on the inside now fifth. Bet twice is sixth. Masterful Advocate is seventh. No more flowers on the outside is racing eighth. Templar Hill moving through along the inside ninth. Chocolate one is tenth. No more flowers back to 11th. After that, it's Ali Sheba, Momentous, Crypto Clearance. Between horses, Gulch is far back. On the outside, Conquista Rose is 16th. And the favorite, Demons Be Gone, is 17th at last. He's pulling up around the far turn on the inside it's on the line but on the outside there goes bet twice bet twice to the front way ahead with craig Coretta board on the inside that's on the line with gary stevens hanging tough as they turn for home a quarter of a mile to go bet twice taking the lead by one on the outside here comes ali sheba on the line dropping out of it middle of the racetrack Crypto clearance with Jose Santos is flying. Leo Castelli between horses. And down the stretch they come. Bet twice on the inside, leads it by a head. On the outside, here comes Ali Sheba. Ali Sheba with Chris McCarran to the front. Bet twice back to second. Here's the finish. Ali Sheba wins it by three parts of a length. On the inside, bet twice finishing second. Havies copy with Mickey Salomone, part of the neutral field, finishing third. That's the unofficial finish. Jack Van Berg was right. Ali Sheba did get his confidence back. Chris, it's been a little while coming for you, but you've won the Kentucky Derby. Congratulations. Well, uh, I I don't think it could have come too soon. Uh, an experience like this is just unbelievable. I, I'm ecstatic. It was a very exciting trip. I, I had a very rough trip, and the Colt was able to uh, survive a little stumbling uh, performance there at the eighth pole and, and still overcome that. And, and how he won today, I, I just can't believe. Here is Chris McCarron and a beautiful ride with Ali Sheba, but watch the traffic problems right from the start. The thing I remember most about Ali Sheba was his race in the Kentucky Derby. He, he did something in the stretch of the Kentucky Derby that, that horses really can't do. I mean, he just literally was knocked to his knees in the heat of the stretch drive, and got back up when any other horse would have had a perfect excuse just to kind of flatten out and give it up and get beat three, four, five lengths, and he just wasn't gonna be beaten. Rarely does a horse have the kind of trouble that Ali Sheba had during the stretch run of the Kentucky Derby and come back to win it. I mean, it was an incredible comeback. And this is a horse that was developing a reputation as a bridesmaid. He kept finishing second, he kept finishing third. He'd won only one race in 10 career starts. Ali Sheba has the first leg of the Triple Crown. Two more to win, and then he would win $5 million. The Breeders' Cup Day was designed to be Thoroughbred Racing's season-ending climax, to give this sport a championship day. That was never better shown than the 1987 Breeders' Cup Classic. It was a classic matchup of Kentucky Derby winners and of Racing Hall of Famers. The favorite was the 86 Derby winner Ferdinand, trained by 74-year-old Hall of Famer Charlie Weddingham, ridden by 56-year-old Hall of Famer Bill Shoemaker. The top challenger was that year's Derby winner, Ali Sheba, conditioned by Hall of Famer Jack Van Berg, ridden by the future Hall of Fame jockey Chris McCarran. The race was everything a great race should be. Judge Angelucci and Candy's Gold moving together on the lead. The opening quarter went to 23 flat, 46 and 2 for the half. Those two are still going at it. Good command kept close to them toward the inside. He's a Charles running third. And Ferdinand now has asked for more run. He'll need racing room though. He's on the inside fifth. Skywalker is alongside him. And now Ali Sheba begins to roll from the back of the pack. And the fleet has dropped back. There's a half mile to run in this Breeders Cup Classic. And it is Candy's Gold toward the inside. Judge Angelucci and Ferdinand to pick him up now on the outside third. Good command is putting in his run toward the rail. Skywalker is still in it. He's only three lengths off the lead. And Ali Sheba continues to pick him up on the outside with a dramatic run toward the leaders. They are at the corner pole here in Hollywood Park. And it is Judge Angelucci on the outside. Kenny's going toward the rail. Ferdinand and Ali Sheba coming on from the outside. Good command is in behind horses. They're less than a for one out. Judge Angelucci desperate. Ferdinand right there. Sheba on the outside, Ferdinand, Judge Angelucci on the outside, Ali Sheba, Ferdinand has the lead, Ali Sheba, a final surge, the two Derby winners hit the wire together, Ferdinand.
Ferdinand held on to win by a nose and edged Ali Sheba for 1987 Horse of the Year honors. And winning colors quickly takes command. Risen Star on the outside into the second spot. And between horses, King Post is up close early in third. Then it's a gap of about three. Ryan's time is fourth on the outside. Granakis is racing fifth. And Cephas is the trailer as the sextet rounds the first turn. It's winning colors in command by a length of three quarters. Risen Star in pursuit from the second spot. And Robbie Davis has King Post right there third. Then it's a gap of about six. For Brian's time on the outside fourth. Renakis is at the rail. And about eight lengths farther back to Cephas. From winning colors to Cephas, about 25 lengths. Moving to the back stretch. Winning Colors now has an easy lead after the first quarter in 23 and 2 and coming to the half mile mark and that's in 47 and 1. So Winning Colors in front by about four lengths, probably not as slow as Gary Stevens would like it to be, but Winning Colors has the lead by three and Risen Star is right there by the same margin and now cutting the gap to about a length and a half. Here comes Risen Star. Delahousie asked the son of Secretariat for speed and gets it. Only a half length separate the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner as they move down the backstretch. Three quarters in 111 and four, the pace is quickening. Now it's winning colors in front three parts of a length. Risen Star on the outside is second by four. King Post is third. Brian's time fourth on the outside ahead. Granakis is fifth, and it's another 15 lengths back to the trailer, Cephas, as they round the far turn. Now heads apart, Risen Star on the outside. The Preakness winner takes command from the Derby winner. Winning colors along the inside, drops back second by two and a half. King Post, a close up third, that's the longest shot on the board, and he's within striking distance. Three and a half back, Brian's time. They move to the top of the stretch, and Risen Star has the lead by three. The Philly is dropping back as King Post makes his move on the outside. They're approaching the quarter pole, and Risen Star has the lead by four. Eddie Delahousie aboard. King Post is in the runner-up spot at this point. Bryant's time at the rail is racing third. Winning colors back to fourth. Then, then uh, Cephas and Granakis. But past the eighth pole, Risen Star drawing away. He looks like his daddy at this point. Risen Star in front and down the stretch they come. Risen Star drawing off. He's in front by 15, by 18. Risen Star takes the Belmont just like his daddy Secretariat did. King Post finishes second. Brian's time third. Then it was Cephas Granakis and the Philly winning colors finishes third. They're jubilant at Belmont, I'm sure in New Orleans. The final time on the board, two minutes, 26 and two-fifths seconds. And that, Dave, is the second fastest Belmont in his history. Sec to go all in line and they're off and pulverizing quickly jumps to the lead Houston on the outside in second Dancil between them third Northern Wolf on the outside is fourth and Sunday Silence is right there and now fourth moving up between horses passing the stands for the first time Northern Wolf takes the lead by a hit Houston with Cordero on the inside saving ground in second pulverizing is dropped back to be third then on the outside it's Sunday Silence fourth Easy goer on the outside is fifth at this point. Three and a half lengths off the lead. Larry Snyder with Dansel at the rail is next. Then comes Rock Point and three lengths back to the trailer. Hawkster, who is 15 lengths off the leader, who is now Houston as they move on to the backstretch. 
the first quarter in 23 and two-fifths seconds. It's fast, but not that fast. Down the back stretch. Houston with Cordero leading the pack by three lengths. Northern Wolf is second, and now the Kentucky Derby winner. On the outside, Sunday Silence takes second, and here comes Easy Goer with a quick move on the outside with Pat Day. Going down the back stretch. It's Houston in front by a head. Easy Goer, the favorite, up to challenge. Sunday Silence between horses in tight quarters there. Back into third. Dancel is fourth. Northern Wolf fifth. Rock Point on the outside. Sixth. Pulverizing has had it. He's back to seventh, and Hawkster hasn't started to run. Midway on the turn. Dancel on the outside to the front. On the outside, here comes Sunday Silence to challenge. Now they're heads apart. Sunday Silence with Pat Valenzuela takes the lead at the quarter pole. Easy Goer back into second position. Dancel coming on third in the stretch. On the outside, it's Sunday Silence. On the inside, easy goer. And down the stretch they come. On the outside, it's Sunday Silence. Easy goer with Pat Day. Back to challenge. Heads apart. Easy goer on the inside with a slight lead. On the outside, Sunday Silence. The rest of them far back. Here's the finish of the Preakness. Sunday Silence and easy goer. Photo finish. Noses apart. I can't tell. But on the outside, Sunday Silence with Pat Bell. He's waving his whip like he thinks he won it. The time, 153 and 4 fifth seconds. A dramatic photo finish. Either Sunday Silence on the outside, the winner of the Derby, who will try to make it two steps to the Triple Crown, or easy go are at the rail with Pat Day. What a... His game fighting back. There you see as they turn for home. They've taken the lead away from Houston, and Sunday Silence made a big move on Easy Goer, who had made a big move going into the turn. And as they turn for home, I mean, you can't call the finish here. These two Colts are head and head, tooth and tooth. Unofficially, it is, it is Sunday, Sunday Silence. silence. Go ahead, and Charlie. Here they come with it. Just, just a very game battle between the two. Both riders going. Pat Valenzuela going for a right-handed stick. He's in close. Easy Goer is along the rail. They're, they're just eyeball to eyeball these two. And Easy Goer, you know, down along the rail there. Maybe that's not the best spot. But both riders riding hell bent. And here they come. Two of them together. It's a bob of the head all the way to the wire. Sunday silence. What a game cult. They're both game. I mean, this is, this is a storybook finish. This is what we waited for. This is horse racing, and it could in fact be. Ali Dar and affirmed all over again, going in all three of the Triple Crown races. With the result the same. <laughs> With the result the same, that's what I mean. One more, if it's unofficial, uh, remember, but it sure does look like he had it there. to be and here of course a, a stretch drive that will be replayed for years and these two just leave the rest of them in their wake through the stretch day on the inside valenzuela on the outside whipping and driving sunday silence jockey in the yellow cap easy goer the favorite on the inside to no avail though because sunday silence unofficially is holding on to this preakness and here's the way they came to the finish and again just to to bring you completely up to date not only do we have an objection filed by day against Valenzuela but an objection filed by Larry Snyder who finished fourth aboard Dancil against Chris Antley who finished third above Rock Point and we have just learned both foul claims have been disallowed the result is official Sunday silence has won two-thirds of the triple crown he is the official winner easy goer finishes second Rock Point is third that is upheld Dancel is fourth and there are the prices The 1989 Breeders' Cup Classic featuring superstars Easy Goer and Sunday Silence was truly a race for the ages. Easy Goer, sired by the great Alidar, had the bloodlines of a champion. Meanwhile, Sunday Silence was from more ordinary stock. But racing greatness is determined on the track, and Sunday Silence was victorious in the Kentucky Derby. He also won the second jewel of the Triple Crown, beating Easy Goer in the Preakness by a nose. But Easy Goer spoiled Sunday Silence's Triple Crown dreams, winning the Belmont Stakes in a romp. Easy Goer entered the Breeders' Cup, riding a five-race winning streak, including the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Meanwhile, Sunday Silence had mixed success, having been beaten by a stretch-running prize in the Swap Stakes. The race was also a heavyweight battle between two of the sport's top jockeys. Pat Day burst into national prominence, winning the inaugural Breeders' Cup Classic aboard Wild Again. Sunday Silence was ridden by Chris McCarron, who that year was inducted into Racing's Hall of Fame. 
The two champions were from the barns of two of the top trainers in the world. Shug McGahee was the East Coast top young trainer who had easy goer poised for victory. Charlie Whittingham is one of the great trainers of all time and considered Sunday Silence the greatest horse he ever saddled. Even the owners had an amazing storyline. Easy Goer was from Ogden Phipps stable and was the product of nearly a century of successful breeding. Phipps is one of the most prominent figures in thoroughbred history. He kept his prize champions at Claiborne Farm, founded by Bull Hancock. When Bull died, the executors of his estate awarded Seth Hancock presidency of the farm, bypassing Seth's older brother, Arthur. Arthur was determined to make his mark on the sport so dear to him, and he founded Stone Farm and built it into a racing powerhouse, breeding two Kentucky Derby winners. With Horse of the Year honors in the balance, here's Tom Durkin with the call of the 1989 Breeders' Cup Classic. Sunday silence. The Derby and Preakness winner will move into post position number eight. Poised in the gate, Belmont winner, easy goer in post position one. They're standing in line, and they're off. Sunday Silence breaks alertly. Easy Goer was off a step slow toward the inside. Slew City Slew, blushing John in present value. And they're passing us now for the first time. Slew City Slew is out to take the early lead now. And he's opened up a quick lead here of two and a half lengths. Blushing John is second on the outside. Present value is third. Sunday Silence is rating in fourth position. He's six lengths off the lead. Reselecto is seventh. Four lengths back to Easy Goer. He is 10 lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew as they move into the first turn and the trailers are crypto clearance and western playboy slew city slew and he zipped the opening quarter in 22 and two fifth seconds a brazen display of early speed in this mile and a quarter classic blushing john is tracking him as they make their way on to the back stretch now sunday silence poised on the outside third present value to his inside then me selecto Easy Goer is yet to do his best running. He is still nine lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew. He's five lengths behind Sunday Silence, and now he's beginning to roll. They've run a half mile in 46 and one fifth seconds. Slew City Slew weakening on the lead. Blushing John has been tracking him all the way. Sunday Silence bracing for the oncoming power of Easy Goer, who's right at his neck, and the stage is set with three furlongs to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Blushing John taking the lead, three-eighths of a mile out. It's Blushing John in front. Sunday Silence on the outside, gearing up now. He's left Easy Goer, two and a half lengths behind. They're coming to the top of the stretch, and Blushing John is under a hand ride. He leads by length and a half. Sunday Silence, a threatening presence on the outside. Easy Goer is set down, and he's put to a fierce drive. Coming to the final furlong, Sunday Silence surges to the front. Blushing John trying to fight back. Easy Goer with one final acceleration, and Sunday Silence holds up. Sunday Silence in a racing epic. Sunday Silence and Easy Goer made the classic live up to its unbelievable expectations. Along the backstretch, Sunday Silence was stalking the leader, Slew City Slew, and Easy Goer charged to stay close to his rival. In the rest is one of the greatest finishes in thoroughbred racing history, as Sunday Silence made a huge move to take the lead, blowing past Blushing John. Pat Day made a thundering late charge aboard Easy Goer, but Sunday Silence held off his old rival to win racing's richest race, the $3 million Breeders' Cup Classic, to earn an Eclipse Award as Horse of the Year. right to the lead, the Philly champion quickly opens up here by two lengths. And on the far outside, Dejure is right there and Glitterman is also mixing it up. Dejure mixing it up now with his American rivals. Carson City is up close to the pace. He's running along in fourth position. Potentiality is fifth. Dargai is now racing in sixth position. Mr. Nickerson has fallen. We have a spill on the turn. Shaker Knit went down and Mr. Nickerson also down on the track spill on the far turn and now the field 
moving toward the top of the stretch. It's Dejour fighting it out with last year's champion safely kept. The English champion now has taken a short lead as they come to the top of the stretch. Safely kept is right there in behind them. Glitterman is now running along in third. Black Tie Affair sweeps to the outside. Then Prospector's Gamble and Carson City. They hooked up at the start. They're still going at it. Safely kept on the inside. Brave down to the final furlong. On the outside, Dejour and neither giving way. A dramatic confrontation here as they come down to the final 16th. And it is Dejour who forges to the front. Safely kept coming back at him. And Dejour took a bad step. Ten feet from the wire. And safely kept comes on to snatch the victory in the final stride. They were clearly the two best sprinters in the world. But victory had gone to the American Philly. It seemed like Dejour had the race in hand. When in the final strides, he jumped shadows and lost his action. He could match up with the Americans on their surface, but safely kept, who had just missed winning the race the year before, had kept... ...on a turn. The view from the inside gate is quite different from the outside position, which went to Derby winner Unbridled, here entering that outside stall in the field of 14. Standing in, in order, in line. And uh, they're off. Is Vestia breaks alertly, and 36 Red is set immediately toward the lead. Home at last is up close fast. Boat Genius is with a sharp early move. Ibn Bay is up there mixing it up early. On the far outside, Dispersal is caught four wide round the first turn. And then the down inside, it's opening verse on the outside. The Belmont winner, go and go. He's only five lengths off the early lead. Then me, Selecto, flying Continental. Rhythm will do his running from well off the pace. He's already 11 lengths out of it. Then it's unbridled, and DeRoche has one horse beaten, and that is long shot, lively one, as they continue down the back stretch here at Belmont Park. Oh, genius battles his way out to a short lead. Dispersal's right there with him, and toward the inside, 36th red, a 3-5 battle for the lead. Ibn Bay is up close, home at last is right there on the outside. The Canadian Grey is Vestia toward the inside. Opening first is moving through it between horses. He's just six lengths off the lead. Then go and go and me selecto. Rhythm, the favorite, is still a dozen lengths out of it. And the pace is a demanding one. They've run a half mile in 45 and 4 fifth seconds. And 36 Red has fought his way now to the lead. It's 36 Red in front. Bo Genius trying to stay with him. Dispersal has dropped out of it. Ibn Bay is right there. Third, home at last is fourth. Opening verse is gathering momentum on the outside, and here he comes now. Me Selecto and Rhythm moves into contention. He's just four lengths off the lead, then Lively one and DeRoche, and it is anyone's race now as they turn for home in the seventh Breeders' Cup Classic. 36 yeah. has fought his way to the lead. He's got a short lead as Vesti is coming hard. Opening verse is there on the outside. Evan Bay is still in with the chance. Unbridled, the Derby winner is coming through an opening, and DeRoche is coming with a minute. In a trademark Pat Day performance, he used the only possible strategy from an outside post. Coming from next to last, he worked unbridled through the pack, first on the inside, then between horses, moving him into contention to overtake the surprising European Ibn Bay. Without a win in a graded stake since the Kentucky Derby, unbridled was almost forgotten by the betters at 6-1. to one. It was a moment of redemption for unbridled Pat Day and a brilliant training job by Carl Nasker. A glimpse of triumph on a heartrending day at Belmont Park. Rarely, if ever, had a horse come across the Atlantic to the Breeders' Cup with the advanced billing of Arazi. Trained by the French master Francois Boutin, the son of blushing groom was the prince of European two-year-olds. Now he would try the Americans on their surface. 
two favorites here, Razi and Bertrando. And indeed, it is Arazi who is a slight favorite as he takes his place in the starting gate. We're ready for the start in the juvenile, and they're off. And Bertrando comes out running. Agincourt is right there. And on the outside, it's Starry Coot. But it is Bertrando, Alex Solis, intent on the lead. And he wins the race into the first turn. He's there by a length and a half. Star Recruit and Bag in close pursuit. Agincourt saving ground all the way. Devil on Ice was five ride, rounding the first turn. Showbrook is now racing sixth in between horses. Pine Bluff is under a firm hold at the inside, racing seventh. Big Sur is eighth on the outside. Onlooker is ninth. Try to watch is tenth. He's about ten lengths off the lead, and he's launching a bid now from the back of the pack. Then it's Dance Floor farther back. Snappy landing, and Arazi, the European star, is a dozen lengths from the front as Offbeat trails the field as they continue midway down the backstretch. Bertrando coasting on an uncontested lead, and he's moving at a quick pace. The quarter in 23 and 1, he gets a half in 46 and 3 fifths seconds. It is still Bertrando out there unchallenged. He leads by two. Long shot, Agincourt still chasing second. Pine Bluff is only three lengths for the lead. Arazi hits his best stride, and there goes the European star, Arazi, and he's coming with a menacing rush to Bertrando, and now the stage is set as they move toward the top of the stretch, and Arazi runs right by him. Arazi with a dramatic move as the field turns for home. He's wide into the stretch. Bertrando stunned at the inside with the move here of Arazi, and he's pouring it on. Just incredible move as they come to the top of the stretch by four now. And then it's Bertrando, who is now a discouraged second farther back. It is snappy landing, and they're coming down to the finish here. Here indeed is a superstar. Arazi, absolutely brilliant. He was taken under a hard hold to win it here by five, and he could have won by 10, perhaps. And Bertrando was second. Absolutely sensational. Down the back stretch, Pat Valenzuela had only one horse beat. Suddenly, he asked Arazi to go, and he turned on the afterburners. Arazi, with a brilliant move, he's just running by horses like they're tied to a post. Look at Arazi now to the outside. Bertrando had made an easy lead, was going along in stride, and Arazi just blew by. Electrifying one of the greatest performances ever by a two-year-old. The crowd was stunned at Arazi's brilliance. Arazi, a conquering hero. A $2.9 million yearling, AP Indy, had won the Belmont Stakes and Santa Anita Derby earlier in the year. To win Horse of the Year, he would have to reverse a loss to the five-year-old Pleasant Tap in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. In the game, and they are off in the ninth. Breeders' Cup Classic, and AP Indy breaks well today. He comes out running for the lead. Jolie's Halo with good speed as well. Defensive play is there toward the inside. Thunder Rumble is up close to a strong early pace here as they race by the stands for the first time. It's Jolie's Halo and Thunder Rumble, and those two hook up in an early duel. Defensive players in behind him. Sultry Song is now moving into third. Technology is four wide, running in fourth. Then toward the inside, defensive play is fifth. AP Indy is winning sixth. Jalifa is a wide seventh. Zoman is up close to an early pace. Marketry is there on the outside. And then it's Pleasant Tap. He's running now in 11th position. He's only about eight lengths from the early lead. European Rodrigo Di Triano's to his outside. Then it's five lengths to Rain Road. And far, far behind is Strike the Gold. He's already 20 out of it. And the half went in 45 and four. A sizzling pace here as they move into the backstretch. Thunder Rumble is pressed hard under intense pressure from Jolie's Halo. Technology is trying to keep pace in third. Defensive play is right there now, racing in fourth position. Sultry Song is fifth. Zoman is only five lengths from the lead. Jolifa is moving strongly as they move into the far turn. AP and he's dropped back in the pack. Pleasant Tap is in between horses. Now he's still about seven lengths from the lead. And then it's Marquetry as they're on the far turn. And Thunder Rumble rolls to a two-length lead now. Defensive play has moved in toward the inside. Jolie's Halo's in an all-out drive. He's working hard to keep up. AP Indy is finding his best stride. And he's moving powerfully in between horses as they move toward the top of the stretch in this ninth Raiders Cup Classic defensive play. Thunder Rumble still there.
They finished 1-2 as expected, but this time it was AP Indy over Pleasant Tap. The three-year-old on his way to Horse of the Year as the sun set. Winning this, he's been five and a half lengths behind Hauling in the International and four lengths behind Pentar and the champion in Ireland. But he's a good, tough old sort. I remember Brett Doyle, when he won the Sussex on Serdar, he got ticked off for punching the air by Clive Britton. Well, I think if he scooped the $2.4 million here, Clive might let him punch the air indeed go into orbit. Well, the championship of the world. We're just going to see the best horse in the world today. Will it be a cigar? There you are, Graham. And indeed, they're loading the stalls at the mile and a quarter start for the Dubai World Cup. Indeed, cigar, the world champion if he wins this. 14 on the strong. Comes from stall eight, can go with the pace. That's it. Under orders and they race away and Dame Wim was fast to stride. That gets the early call. Throw on the inside. Uh, running fast is Lucario. Spot the white blinkers and Lucario takes them on. At this stage, a cigar posted down in about the six or seven slot midfield. Out wide is Needle Gun and uh, towards the back, Soul of the Matter and Pentire is racing very wide on the track. They go through the uh, first quarter mile at a breakneck pace and through on the inside, the white blinkers and Lucario showing in the lead. Le Carrier to the Japanese horse, lively mount the inside, uh, these are one and two. Pulling hard in third is uh, Dame Wynn. Cigar settled four, that's just wide uh, with Needle Gun behind that. And trying to make ground the inside is Halling as they begin the first turn, but it's Japan making that good uh, advantage of the one draw has the edge, the yellow sleeve. The white blinkers is Le Carrier, the blue sleeves uh, is Tamayez. Then Cigar, the star sleeve jacket on the outside, and look at that horse travel. Pentai sitting wide on the pack, Halling's in behind them, so too uh, Needle Gun. Tamayez is well placed, and they've gone past the halfway stage, and Cigar has come through to shade for the lead with Dame Wynn and Le Carrier, one, two, and three. Sayonara to the Japanese, the yellow sleeves, the inside. White blinkers, it's uh, Le Carrier leading. Here comes Cigar, they're past the halfway stage. Dame Wynn's got the split between the pack. Uh, got it getting them covered, is Pentai making ground the outside. Then comes uh, Halling in virtually an all-white jacket as they come to the top of the home run. And this cigar, he's going a double as they turn for home with three furlongs to go. Le Carrier tries to make a race of it. Cigar, the star sleeve jacket. Yellow slides, here comes Pentire. A Dane Wing can fight no more. Soul of the Hamadar has made giant strides through, but Cigar goes for home at quarter of a mile to go. And Cigar has it, but here comes Soul of the Matter on the outside. And Soul of the Matter comes to press for Cigar. America one and two. Pentire back in third. They've got a furlong to go. It's a duel to the line. And Soul of the Matter the outside of Cigar. And Cigar is digging deep. He's never had to fight harder. He's coming back. It's going to be Cigar that's going to take it. Up to the line, Cigar by three parts of the lane. 14 out of 14 for Cigar. And world champion, Soul of the Matter in second. And then for third, we had Le Carrier. Then came Pentire in four. Uh, followed then by uh, Tamayet, who came home in five. And then Needle Gun and Torrential and La Roche, who done got into it. Uh, Dave Wynn virtually uh, finished last, but it looks as if the Halling is virtually pulled up. And so the result of the Dubai World Cup, the mighty, the invincible, everything that is superlative in horse racing has been seen here today in the Dubai World Cup with the win, the thrilling win of number eight, uh, Cigar. Cigar in the colors of Alan Paulson. This one trained by Bill Mott and ridden by Jerry Bailey. By gum, this horse had to dig deep. But he's came here, he's taken on the world, and he has conquered. But Cigar's just a picture-perfect horse. He's just as calm as can be, and, and Jerry's got a lot of confidence. We were just talking. He's, well, naturally, he feels great. Back to you, Tom. All right, and don't we all feel great uh, seeing this one in action? Uh, you can savor the greatness only a couple more times. Cigar, his last race at Belmont, second last of his career. Here's Tom Durkin. Ready for the start. And they're off. Louis Coutures and Skip Away break together. Secreto de Estano's just in behind him. Cigar came out in good order on the outside. Mahogany Hall, editor's note, will be the early trailer. Louis Coutures has established the early lead. Skip Away, though, right there. 
to be his escort as they begin their run into the backstretch. Skip away settles a half length off front running Louis Couture's three and a half lengths back and Cigar is moving eagerly early. Gary Bailey trying to harness his early speed. He's third on the outside and well in hand. To his inside is long shot Secreto de Estado. At the back of the pack, the Belmont winner, editor's note. And the trailer is Mahogany Hall as they begin that long run down the Belmont backstretch. The pace is a sensible one. 24 seconds flat for the opening quarter. And they have run a half mile here in 47 and 3 fifth seconds. Louis Couture is in front. His constant companion is skip away. Four lengths back to an unhurried Jerry Bailey with champion cigar. They're now about six lengths from Louis Couture's. Segreto Zayostato is nothing and he's dropping back. Alongside him is editor's note as the field enters the far turn. Mahogany Hall is 15 behind. Around the far turn, a half mile left in the Jockey Gold Cup. Louis Couture is the Preakness winner, is the leader. Skip away a second and there he goes. Cigar is on the move and he is taking aim at the leaders. He is three lengths behind with three furlongs to go. It's a break of four lengths back to editor's note. Mahogany Hall getting underway. It is Louis Couture's and skip away and they are inseparable as they turn for home with cigar and imposing presence in behind them they turn for home as Skippaway has taken the lead it is skip away in front louis couture is down inside cigar bearing down on them he's a length behind skip away with one furlong to go skip away tough customer today jerry bailey fully extending cigar skip away might pull it off here comes cigar cigar wanders to the outside skip away here's the finish and it is Skipaway got it. I believe Skipaway has defeated Cigar today. Shane Sellers thinks so. It was very close. They were coming down to the finish. Skipaway had the lead, but then inexplicably, Cigar wandered to the outside ever so slightly, and that may have made the difference. Skipaway appears to have pulled off an upset here. It's very close. Tom. All right, Tom Durkin, the three-year-old skip away, cementing the three-year-old championship and perhaps pulling off the unthinkable, upsetting the great cigar. Shane Sellers celebrated just beyond the wire, and it was Sellers who re-inherited the mount after a poor ride by Jose Santos in the Travers Stakes. And here they are, Louis Couture's giving it up to skip away. Sellers with a furious hand ride, and Jerry Bailey showed plenty of patience didn't go up after them early and now has dead aim on them but furiously working the whip left-handed here trying to get cigar willing him to victory cigar gaining ground but only gradually because skip away is game and here comes the wire skip away trying to hold off cigar and just does it wow what a finish shane sellers and skip away the three-year-old leader upsetting cigar and greg mccarran is alongside Shane, congratulations. That's got to be quite the feeling to beat horse of the year. Oh, Greg, I don't know what to say. This coach just ran a superb race today. He had me right off of Louis Couture. So I've heard from the early going. I had him in my sight. And around the turn, he just picked it up. I put the bit in his mouth, and he just took off. And I just couldn't believe the cigar wasn't on me yet. And uh, what impressed me the most is he got to me at the 16th point, and this coach just fought hard. And, and I'll run just an emotional time for me and his coach. He's been a whole lot to my career. Well, once again, congratulations. Back to you, Tom. All right, so Cigar has been beaten. Was Jerry Bailey overconfident? Let him get away with slow early fractions. We'll talk about it more, but first, back to our update studio. But the most amazing American trained winner of the Breeders' Cup Mile was also perhaps the most unlikely in the Championship Series' great history. It's the horse, a $6,000 yearling who had to overcome a torn hoof and a mysterious hind leg lameness to become a Breeders' Cup champion. Not once, but twice. Owned by Prestonwood Farm and Wall Street Racing Stable, and trained by the transplanted Englishman Michael Dickinson, the horse had tried the Breeders' Cup sprint in 1995 and ran last of 13. Now, in 1996, in the mile, the horse was up against the full field of 14 runners, including the European superstar Mark of Esteem and a future mile champion, Spinning World. 
On the outside, urgent request is right there. De Haas sitting in just in behind the lead. He's running in third. Chaposa Springs is now fourth. Spinning World fifth on the outside. Mark of Esteem is still in behind horses as they make the turn into this towering stretch here at Woodbine. It's Kiridachi and De Haas is coming to Kiridachi. Urgent request is nothing left. Spinning World is right there. And on the far outside, Mark of Esteem has still got a lot to do. It's the American, Da Haas, with a two-length lead. Spinning World trying to reel him in as they come down to the finish. But the victory goes to Da Haas in the mile. He won by a length and a half. Spinning World was second. And St. Wish came on to be third. Da Haas had become a Breeders' Cup champion. And his legend would continue to grow. But first, there were more setbacks. He missed all of 1997, never getting to the track because of problems with his tendons and fetlocks. But in 1998, at age six, De Haas finally was back in training and a real challenge for his trainer, Michael Dickinson. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but Joan and I don't have any children, and our horses are our children. And no father could be prouder of, of his son than I am of De Haas. And Joan, you know, no mother could be prouder. I mean, uh, our horses are our boys and girls. And I suppose because we love him so much. Dickinson bought the horse into the Breeders' Cup mile off a two-year layoff and a single prep race, an allowance race at Colonial Downs in Virginia. Could he, would he be ready to take on 13 of the best turf milers in the world off just that one race? The crowd of more than 80,000 at Churchill Downs bet 11 to one against him but they would soon be cheering De Haas. On the outside, Kate Cross, a short lead among men toward the inside. Reigning horse of the year, favorite trick is right there. And Pat Day is looking at favorite trick. As they approach the top of the stretch, they are in front, a short lead. One of the stars is just in behind them, and a host of pursuers are coming on. De Haas is in with the chance on the outside. Second Empire, Hawksley Hill is now coming hard. Labib is finding his best partner. Claudia Lentz on the outside, nothing left for favorite trick. It is De Haas and Hawksley Hill. Hawksley Hill and DeHaas. Hawksley Hill forms a short lead. DeHaas is game as they come. Coming down to the line. Spine tingling front side. DeHaas comes back. Unbelievable. Sensational. In victory here today. Very, very close with Hawksley Hill. Oh, my. This is the greatest comeback since Lazarus. DeHaas on the rail wins his second Breeders' Cup championship by a head over Hawksley Hill. The replay shows that in mid-stretch, Hawksley Hill actually put his head in front, but De Haas, under his new rider, John Velasquez, re-rallied to get to the wire first. The amazing De Haas, out of racing for almost two years, with just an allowance prep race on his past performance line in 1998, wins the Breeders' Cup mile for the second time in his career. That race would be his last. De Haas would never race again, but he didn't have to. Because forevermore, you'll be a Breeders' Cup legend. This is only the fourth time in charismatic's racing career that he has gone off as the favorite. Mike Pagram, who last year had real quiet, but this year, Silver Bullet Day. Elliot Walden, who watched his horse, Menifee, try to spoil the party. The crowd in full throat right now as the horses load into the starting gate. And for the call of the Belmont, Dave Johnson. Mile and a half, a fast track, a field of 12, all three-year-olds. The filly carries five pounds less than the Colts, 121 for Silver Bullet Day, the others 126. And Lemon Drop Kid is giving him a little bit of trouble trying to get into the starting gate right now. There goes Patience Game. Wayne Lucas. Yeah. Wayne Lucas and Bob Lewis. Adonis. Bob Baffert, the trainer of Silver Bullet Day. 
Menifee second in the Derby and the Preakness. And his trainer, Elliot Walden, the jockey, is out, Pat Day. Two out. Still got one out. Got one out. That one is best of luck. He's in line. We're ready for the start. And they're off in the Belmont Stakes and best of luck was off a step slowly as was Pineapp and Charismatic gets away cleanly as they run to the first turn. Menifee surprisingly on the outside along with Steven got even showing early speed Charismatic and the Philly Silver Bullet Day at the rail. They're at the clubhouse turn, and it's Silver Bullet Day with the red cap leading it, and the derby winner on the outside, it's Charismatic now putting ahead in front. It's the lady and the champ up front. Charismatic on the outside, and Silver Bullet Day races in the second spot. On the outside with the red color, Stephen Godeven is in third position. Moving through on the inside, that's Vision and Verse. As they race down the back stretch, the first quarter was in 23 and 3. They straighten away for the run down the back stretch. And it's Silver Bullet Day on the inside, in front by a head. Charismatic going for the Triple Crown a second. And Stephen got even, inching up on the outside third. Prime Directive with the red blinkers is fourth. And along the inside, Vision and Verse is fifth at this point. Then comes Menifee, who has been shuffled back into sixth position. Lemon Drop Kid is next. After that, it's Patience Game. Teletable, two and a half back to Adonis. And far back, it's Best of Luck. And far, far back, and having lost touch with the field, Pine. They go to the far turn. And Silver Bullet Day leads it by half a length easily. Jerry Bailey aboard. Charismatic is second. And on the outside, Stephen got even. And just behind those in the black cap, Vision and Verse saving ground on the inside as they reach the midway point on the turn. Adonis is fifth at this point. Lemon Drop Kid is sixth. Menifee is seventh as they move to the top of the stretch. It's the Philly Silver Bullet Day on the rail in front. Between horses, Charismatic trying for the triple crown. On the outside, Steven got even. Adonis, and here on the extreme outside comes Lemon Drop Kid. At the rail, in the white blinkers, Vision and Verse. Now five of them, and Charismatic takes the lead. Charismatic between horses, but on the outside, there goes Lemon Drop Kid just rushing to contention. Lemon Drop Kid, and on the inside, Vision and Verse. Lemon Drop Kid on the outside, Vision and Verse. Charismatic is beaten. Here's the finish. It's going to be tight. Lemon Drop Kid, I believe, held on to win it by a head. Trained by Scotty Schulhofer. Ridden by Jose Santos on the inside, Vision and Verse. It's a photo finish. Eberto Castillo Jr. finishing in the photo finish. Charismatic denied the triple crown. The final time, two minutes, 27 and four fifth seconds. And Charismatic is pulling up, and that's Chris Hantley off, and he's holding Charismatic's leg. Bob Lewis, the owner there, and, Chris, and just behind Wayne Lucas, the trainer. Breeders' Cup Classic. Gander is moved into line. And the favorite here is Derby winner Fusaychi Pegasus, 6-5 to five on the tote board here at Churchill Downs. Tis now moving into his post position. And on the outside, Giants Causeway up to take post position number 14. Giants Causeway uh, walking just a bit behind the starting gate as he makes his uh, first start in America. In fact, his first start on the dirt. Winner of five straight grade one races in Europe this year. The Hope of Ireland, the Iron Horse, as he's called over there. Walking just a bit in behind the starting gate. The others uh, loaded quite comfortably. And Giants Causeway in no particular hurry to get into the starting gate today. He's rather rambunctious. He tends to be a little hot and uh, act this way in his races. Uh, he's done this uh, in previous races before, and he is really a handful for the assistant starters here at Churchill Downs. What they'll try to do is uh, move around behind him, clasp their hands behind, and perhaps uh, a little extra urging to get into the starting game. And uh, Donna, what's it look like from your uh, point of view? I'm a quarter mile away from him. <laughs> They're getting ready to put the red blindfold on him. 
that you saw in Kalanisi earlier, and uh, that was a good sign for Kalanisi. Hopefully it'll get him in. They've had five guys behind him trying to push him into the gate, but he keeps kicking them away from him, so they're not able to get behind him and just push him. But right now they have the blindfold on him. They'll probably try to take a couple of laps around just to confuse him and disorient him a little bit and then try to take a run at the gate again where he has a little less indication which way he's headed. You can see again now they're trying to get behind him and lock holds behind uh, lock holds of their hands behind his rear end to push him in. But every time they try to do that, he just kicks at him. I think right now they have the entire starting gate crew pushing him into the gate. There he goes. Well, almost. Giants Causeway just about at the starting gate. The blindfold has been applied. Soon to take it off. Blindfold off. Ready to start the 17th running of the Breeders' Cup Classic. And they're off. Lemon Drop Kid has some speed today. Golden Missile toward the inside. Cat Thief, Captain Steve down toward the rail. Here comes Tisdow from the far outside. So they pass us for the first time. It's Cat Thief and Albert the Great now. Albert the Great comes on through to be the early pacemaker. Tisdow, Tis second on the outside, pressing the pace. Lemon Drop Kid is there. Giants Causeway is going to get caught four wide going into the turn. Vision and versus fifth between horses. Cat Thief is sixth toward the inside. Golden Missile going wide into the turn. There was a little traffic trouble there for Guided hey, Tour. Hey, hey, hey. Fusaichi Pegasus is seventh at this juncture. He's about six lengths for the lead. Gander to his outside, and Fusaichi Pegasus is moving early. Near the back of the pack, Pine Dance three wide, a length and a half back to Captain Steve, and another five to late running dust on the bottle. The opening quarter goes in 23 and two fifth seconds, and it's Tis now and Albert the Great. And the two three-year-olds in tandem down the back stretch after a solid opening half of 47 and two fifth seconds. Ireland's Giants Causeway on the outside third. And then it's Vision and Burst, who is uh, in between horses. Lemon Drop Kid toward the inside. The Gray Gander, Fusaichi Pegasus, is still about six lengths from the lead with four furlongs remaining. Captain Steve has moved through opening toward the inside. Golden Missile. Cat Thief, last year's winner, has dropped off the pace now. And then it's Pine Dance as the field rounds the far turn. Albert the Great and Tis now they continue to go at it. Giants Causeway is called on for his run. Lemon Drop Kid is fourth toward the inside. Gander is fifth. Vision versus sixth. Fusa Ichi Pegasus is toiling. The field comes off the turn. Tis now on the outside. Albert the Great on the rail. The two of them continue to go at it. Here comes Giants Causeway for Ireland on the outside. They're coming into the final furlong. Tis now tough as nails. Giants Causeway on the outside. Giants Causeway and Tis now battling head to head. A heart pounding, pulsating stretch drive. And Tis now prevails. Tis now has won it by a nose over Giants Causeway. And it was close for third there between Captain Steve and Albert the Great. Ichi Pegasus ran an uninspiring race today, finishing in the middle of the pack. And the final time here was two minutes and three-fifths of a second. Tom Thank Hammond, you. back to you. Another thrilling riddle of the Breeders' Cup Classic. the Belmont Stakes. Now let's ride with Jorge Chavez and Monarcos the entire way in the Kentucky Derby. Sort of breaking a little sideways. Not uncommon and uh, no real problems. Number 16 in the gold and blue colors of the Oxleys. And getting away cleanly as Chavez places the stretch running Colt in the proper position. Going along easily, as you see, and uh, really clear by himself there as they go by the finish line the first time and into the turn. Dollar Bill just behind him to the outside, but Monarcos clear sailing at this point as Chavez has yet to ask him for any run. And moving up on his inside, Arctic Boy goes up to go head and head with Monarcos, who doesn't seem to be bothered by it, tends to his business in a relaxed mode. Now about midway down the back stretch, where Monarcos made that giant move to win the Florida Derby is where Chavez starts to pump and changes his goggles right there, gets his whip out, and now he is beginning to ride in earnest. Gives Monarcos a little tap to wake him up. And look at him accelerate as he moves inside two horses, inside again on the rail, the ground-saving trip from Chavez. And he has Monarcos in full gear right here. Monarcos picking up horses right and left. He goes by Keats, who's fading. 
And next he has dead aim on number four, Thunder Blitz. And in front of him, Balto Star as the speed horses are dropping back. And Monarcos gets a tap again from Chavez who puts him on the outside out in the middle of the track to keep him out of trouble. Here's Point Given looming now just to his inside. Chavez comes over right there is where the objection occurred. But you can see that Invisible Ink really was not impeded as Monarcos was clear as he went by. Chavez having switched the whip to his left hand now drives to the finish line. They call him Chop Chop because of his whip work. He doesn't need it here, though. Monarcos home free in the Derby. Woo, baby! <laughs> He certainly looked the part this week. And it is now the defending champion, reigning horse of the year at 6-1. to one. And we saw him stop again. That curiousness that Chris McCarron has talked about. There he is, number 10, Tis now, into the gate. So it's the Breeders' Cup Classic, the first $4 million, the distance a mile and a quarter. Will it decide horse of the year? Well, we'll have to wait and find out to see the results. Point given is the leader in the clubhouse as far as that race goes. Maybe this race will change all that. Tom Durkin to call the Breeders' Cup Classic. And the final two horses moving into line here for this 18th Breeders' Cup Classic. The favorite aptitude, two to one on the tote board as he moves into post position number 12. And long shot freedom crest to his outside. In the gate, ready for the start of the Classic. And they're off. To the cheers of the crowd and guided tour breaks alertly with orientate. Albert the Great is gun to the lead. That's Albert the Great. Ore Chavez puts him in front, but Pat Day and orientate are going to take the fight to him. And those two hook up in a speed duel in the first furlong here. Tis now not far behind. He's running third in the early going. Guided tour drops back to run along in fourth. Galileo only five lengths from the lead. He's fifth. The arc winner Saki is sixth on the outside, and the favorite Aptitude is now running in seventh. Macho Uno pulls his way through from eighth now. Black Middle ninth. Include is down toward the inside and he's now tenth. Freedom Crest Gander, who's well in hand and at the back of the pack is long shot up late Stancer. The quarter went in 23 and one fifth seconds. A grueling pace here. And into the wind half of 47 seconds flat. Albert the Great grinding it out on a short lead now. Orientate couldn't stay with them. There goes Guided Tour, who splits horses decisively with five furlongs to go and on the outside the daunting presence of a horse of the year tis now and he's right there just off the pace fourth Saki and Galileo right there and behind the lead Macho knows in the thick of it as aptitude begins to roll here with three and a half furlongs to go in the classic and it is Albert the Great blazing the way tis now looms in second Saki is there on the outside guided toward fights on Galileo's under a heavy drive he's still six lengths behind include will put his run through on the rail aptitude is taken wide by Gander and the field turns for home here comes the arc winner Saki and he storms to the lead Saki in there in the Breeders' Cup Classic. The reigning horse of the year proves his heart and competitiveness once again as he takes on the arc winner and the two battling head and head down the stretch in one of the more thrilling classics we've seen. And Tisnow just gets up to win it. Tisnow and Chris McCarron in the Classic.
welcome back to Del Mar. There's something about this racetrack that just absolutely gets in your blood, and you never pass up an opportunity to come out here. In fact, Jay Privman lives here. This is basically a home game for him. And if you're an owner, you know, that tie to Del Mar gives a little special meaning to the Pacific Classic. There's a lot of the uh, owners who like to come down here for this meet, Chef. It's a big, it's a big time to want to show off your horses. We were talking earlier about how big a race this is for Sid and Jenny Craig because they live in Rancho Santa Fe and they want to win the race. Well, another member of uh, Rancho Santa Fe are the Gans, Ed and Bernice Gann, the owners of Medallia de Oro. So we have the bitter, bitter rivalry here between the residents of Rancho Santa Fe for bragging rights today, between the Gans and the Craigs, the Gans with Medallia d'Oro, right there with the red and blue silks, and Candy Ride wearing the Craigs white and blue silks right there. Two minutes away from post, and Hank Goldberg, let's get your parting shots. Well, I'm very curious to see how this race is going to unfold. Here's what I suspect, and that is that Medallia d'Oro will take the lead, and Candy Ride might take back just a little bit, I think, you know, they talk about the push-button horse aspect with Candy Ride, Julie Crone riding him for the first time. Uh, may not want to gun him right away and just let the horse do his own thing. So I'm not looking for the speed duel to unfold necessarily, and Medallia Doro is awfully tough on the lead. Well, calling the 13th running of the Pacific Classic will be Trevor Denman, the track announcer here, and uh, we kind of have the luxury of being able to work Trevor in here and get his uh, thoughts on today's race. Well, thank you very much. What a tremendous race it's going to be. And you know, I have to play chicken for once. I really do not have an opinion in this race. Medallia, Doro, Candy Ride, I cannot split them. Take a coin, toss the coin, whichever one it comes up. If it's heads, it's Medallia, Doro, Tails, Candy Ride. I've never actually seen Candy Ride in action. We've heard these just great comments about him. But this could turn out to be a quintessential horse race here. Two great jockeys, Jerry Bailey and Julie Crone. Both horses absolutely immaculate in the post parade. But what else would you expect with trainers like Ron McAnally and Bobby Frankel? Two of the best in the world, magnificent horses, and I think we're in for one fantastic horse race. And obviously you can't write off Milwaukee Brew either. He could come from behind and beat both of them if they get involved in a speed duel. Runners going into the gate now. Fleet Street Dance has gone in. Medallio Doro's in. Candy Ride has gone up, and here comes Milwaukee Brew. Milwaukee Brew goes in. Gates closed. They're all set. Feel for the Pacific Classic sent on their way. Candy Ride just bobbled a tiny bit as the gates open, but Candy Ride is okay and going up alongside a Medallio Doro. Fleet Street Dancer is along the inside, and as expected, Milwaukee Brew is taken towards the rear. They come past the stands first time round. As expected, Medallio Doro and Candy Ride stride for stride out here. The long shot Fleet Street Dancer has taken a nice hole too, just two lengths back in third. Milwaukee Brew is last, but he's no more than four lengths off them. They run to the 7 8 bowl, and Medallio Doro and Jerry Bailey not in any hurry at all. They just breeze through the lane first time out. Medallio Doro got a comfortable lead out here. Candy Ride is a length and a quarter back in the second spot. Outside of that is Fleet Street Dancer, and Milwaukee Brew continues to trail. Still only four and a half lengths off the leaders. Looks like all riders are happy with their position. There's probably not going to be much of a change down the back stretch. Medallio Doro continues to take them along. Julie Crone has Candy Ride just a little closer now to make sure Medallio Doro stays honest on the lead. Now they start to quicken as they go to the half mile. Medallio Doro kicks on with it. Candy Ride is in second. Fleet Street Dancer and Milwaukee Brew still right there. Only two lengths separates the entire field with less than half a mile to go. Medallio Doro goes on. Milwaukee Brew is coming with an early run and Candy Ride in the white. Now Medallio Doro and Candy Ride kick on. Milwaukee Brew couldn't go with them. Fleet Street dancers last. They're approaching the quarter bowl, and here's the match race we've been waiting for. Medallio Doro and Jerry Bailey. Candy Ride and Julie Crone are full of run, though. Julie Crone taps Candy Ride on the neck. He responds like a champion. Candy Ride takes the lead. Medallio Doro's running his heart out, but we could be looking at a new superstar out here. Candy Ride, the Argentinian bred, and Julie Crone win the Pacific Classic. Medallio Doro was second. Fleet Street Dancer finished third. And Milwaukee Brew was fourth. Candy Ride remains unbeaten. A perfect six for six now, and he may be the biggest thing to cross the border since Ricky Martin. We have a new star. Well, we got to see just why Ron McAnally has been so excited about this horror. He stepped, he stepped up, and he stepped up big today. He took on 
the horse who everyone has considered to be the top older horse in the country, grabbed him by the throat at the three ace pole, and then drew away to a very impressive victory, a daylight victory for Candy Ride. Here they are turning into the stretch. As you can see, Candy Ride was racing on his wrong lead for a lot of the race, but he finally switched over to his proper lead, and at this point, he's just going to power clear of Medallia Dora, who just cannot go with him. Candy Ride getting a couple of little love taps there from Julie Crone, but he's going to draw off and win by about four in the end. Fleet Street Dancer finished third. He beat Milwaukee Brew, and so he gets the third place money of $120,000 for running in this race today. So Candy Ride living up to all of his billing as he gets the win here in the Pacific Classic. More on the story when we return to Del Mar as we make the race official in just a moment. There are Sid and Jenny Craig celebrating as Candy Ride rolls down the stretch. And give credit to all the track maintenance people here. This turf course is an excellent turf course. All the horsemen praise it greatly and say it's the best turf course in America. They're storming home going into the gate. The two to one favorite under Gary Stevens. Looked like he had a victory in the Arlington Million when he ducked out just before the finish. Stevens seriously injured, but back riding today, the favorite in the John Deere Breeders' Cup turf. A look at High Chaparral, the defending champion. Mick Canan gets him into the gates without a problem. The four horse Suleimani, many like him. Frankie DeTore rides him. And as they continue to load for the turf, a field of nine, let's go up to Tom Durkin, who is ready for the call. There goes uh, Falbrov into the starting gate. And uh, Johar, who has uh, some options for him. Sometimes he can go to the lead, and sometimes he'll come from just a bit off. We'll see how it transpires here in the Breeders' Cup turf. They're in the gate. Storming home, a little fidgety in there. And they're off. Tockett set out to the lead immediately. Balto Star with his usual early flare. The Tin Man is right there. So too Bright Sky and High Chaparral. Foulbrave comes away with the leaders on the outside. Farther back in the early going, Suleimani and Storming Home and Johar will do his running from the back of the pack today as they continue their descent off the hill and head for the main course. And it is Balto Star to be the early leader, Tin Man to be his shadow. Those two. Head to head as they continue toward the main track here. Just in behind, Tockett has been taken off the pace. Bob Rob's under a hard hold. Defending champion High Chaparral in and among horses and well held in fifth position. French Philly Bright Sky drafting in behind horses in the early stages here. Suleimani storming home still together. It's a tight pack with Johar at the back of the wall. As they move by us for the uh, first time here, up top it's Balto Star, and keeping him honest, it's the Tin Man with one circuit remaining here. High Chaparral gets a perfect spot as they move into the clubhouse turn. Tucked away, neatly in behind the lane third. Foul Brav is in the clear and running in fourth. Storming home gets taken wide there, and Suleimani stumbled. He got pinched back, and Suleimani stumbled, took a very bad step. They make their way around the clubhouse turn. Balto Star shattered by the Tin Man. High Chaparral kept right up there, running along in third position as the pace begins to quicken for the run down the backstretch. Foul Rob still on hold, running along in fourth. Storming home, Gary Stevens fifth on the outside, running along in mid-pack, and they're running comfortably at this juncture. Bright Sky has asked for more run at the midway point down the backstretch. Suleimani, long shot, Tockney is tailing off, and Joe Hart still trailing the field. The Tin Man takes over with a half mile to go. It's the Tin Man in front, but Foul Rob looms on the outside. A threatening second as they race into the far turn. High Chaparral is called on for his run as Balto Star retreats. Storming home and Gary Stevens says go with him. They're only three lengths from the front as they approach the top of the stretch. Then Bright Sky on the inside of Suleimani. Johar watching his bid. And there's two furlongs that go in the Breeders' Cup turn. And here comes Falbra charging over the turn on the outside to cut the Tin Man. And Falbra's in front, but here comes High Chaparral. High Chaparral, the defending champ, to take it to Falbra. These two arch rivals head to head with Joe. Breeders' Cup turf. From my point of view here, it looked like high chaparral, but if he did, it was only by a flare nostril, Tom Evan. Equine and human. 
The announcer is still stalling. And the temperature is still rising. And here it is. It's a dead heat. A dead heat. The first in Breeders' Cup history. High Chaparral and Johar have dead heated in the Breeders' Cup turf. Everyone is relieved. A dead heat, High Chaparral and Johar dead heat in the Breeders' Cup turf. Aiden O'Brien, well, no smile there, but he'll have his second victory back-to-back -back wins for High Chaparral in this race, and he and Johar will split first and second money. A dead heat in the Breeders' Cup turf, High Chaparral and Johar. It's never happened before in Breeders' Cup 20. It happened right on the wire. Two horses finishing in an absolute dead heat. Crowd still in shock at Santa Anita after the first dead heat in Breeders' Cup history. It came in the John Deere Breeders' Cup turf. Johar and High Chaparral. There's Dick Mandela, his third winning horse of the day in the official photo. Classic dead heat. And Falbrov on the inside only got beat ahead. What a finish. Johar on the outside, High Chaparral between horses, dead heating for the win, the first winning dead heat in Breeders' Cup history. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. Imperialism got a little bump from the cliff's edge at the start. Read the footnotes, comes away in good order, and there's Lionheart flashing his early speed today. Minister Eric is up close to the pace. Limehouse down toward the inside has been taken back. Quinton's gold rush in the far outside. Bias for the first time. Lionheart leads the way in a host of pursuers. Minister Eric is there. Read the footnotes, his third. Smarty Jones very eager. He's fourth. Pollard's vision is there on the outside, and Quinton's gold rush stacks six wide as they move into the clubhouse turn. By the back, Master David is running along in seventh position. Borrego is eighth on the outside. Pro Prado moves up into ninth. Birdstone is tenth and in between horses. Limehouse is saving ground 11th. Castledale in the clear. He's now running in 12th. French Lake is now 13th. Song of the Sword is 14th. Tappet is running together 15th and 16th with the cliff's edge. And Imperialism is 17th. He has but one horse beaten, and that is action this day. The opening half mile, 46 and 3 fifths seconds. And Lionheart throws down the gauntlet and opens up by three. Testing fractions for him, five furlongs to go. Smarty Jones is a stalking second as they approach the far turn. Pollard's vision in the clear, and he's right there, third. Minister Eric down on the inside, moving from fourth. Read the footnotes, is handling the track well. He's fifth between horses with the half mile to run that run three quarters in one, 11 and four. Borrego's beginning to pick it up on the outside. Pollard's vision threads his way through in between horses. And there goes Tappet. Tappet is circling horses on the far outside. And the cliff's edge is following him. And Imperialism is pisking his way through. Down toward the inside, not to the outside. And Master David follows him. They're 12 lengths from the lead as Lionheart turns for home. And undefeated Smarty Jones comes wide off the turn. And these two hook up at the top of the stretch. Lionheart is all heart. Smarty Jones is all out. And those two deadlocked at the eighth pole. And Smarty Jones is wrong to the lead by journeyman jockey Stuart Elliott and they have taken the lead away from Lionheart farther back it's Limehouse and Imperialism and here is the first undefeated winner of the Kentucky Derby since Seattle Slow in 1977 Smarty Jones has done it what a moment this must be for Stuart Elliott a 39 year old journeyman he has just won the race of a lifetime That's right, he is going for the grade one double this afternoon. Risk averse, evening attire. What's your confidence level? Well, I liked it when it rained a few minutes ago, so that put a little moisture in the track, but he'll he'll hopefully give it a good try. He tries hard every time. All right, well, we'll wish you good luck. Thank you. Good friend. All right, Janine, and uh, let's go up on top now. Here's Tom Durkin. Tom. 
And the final one moving into the starting gate here is Funny Side. We start mile and quarter races here at Belmont Park, just on the beginning of the clubhouse turn. Ready for the start of the 86 Jockey Club Gold Cup. They're in the gate. And they're off. Domestic dispute, and there goes Love of Money now, and he's going right after the lead in the first hundred yards. Love of Money over to the rail with the lead. And there goes Funny Side, Funny Side, very sharp today, very keen, and he wants to get to that lead. Jose Santos wrangles him back to run in second. And it's two lengths back. Newfoundland is third on the outside. Domestic dispute under a good hold, running along in fourth. Evening attire is fifth, five lengths from the lead. Bowman's band just about to pass him. And the cliff's edge is the early trailer here, but it's a very tight pack. And Funny Side has tugged his way up to lead the way. Funny Side in front. Love of Money second on the inside now, encountering to come back after that lead. So a chess game down the back stretch here at Belmont. And Love of Money has reclaimed the lead from Funny Side. Newfoundland right up and on the pace there, and he's on the outside third after a half in 47 and 3 fifths seconds. Domestic dispute, fourth toward the inside. The gray evening attire is in between horses, only about four lengths from front running, love of money. Then Bowman's band to his outside, and stretch running the cliff's edge is the trailer as the field enters the far turn. There goes Newfoundland with the three wide bid after the lead with a half mile to go. Down on the inside, love of money. Funny side still on hold, but back to third. In the meantime, here comes the cliff's edge. And the cliff's edge is a rallying fourth on the far turn. Funny side is stopping. It's Newfoundland now going head to head with love of money. Newfoundland on the outside, love of money at the rail. Funny side under a drive, but he's now back third toward the inside. And the cliff's edge is now fourth. And farther back, evening attire, he's still six lengths behind. Newfoundland comes off the turn with the lead. Newfoundland in front. But here comes the momentum of the cliff's edge on the outside. And Funny Side, who dropped back to third on the far turn, is coming again down to the final 16th. Newfoundland, Funny Side, fights his way to the lead. The gutsy gelding, MD. Funny Side has won with unwavering determination to defeat Newfoundland and the Cliff's Edge. He looked absolutely defeated on the far turn, but he comes back to do it. Funny Side has won the Jockey Club Gold Cup. What a gutsy performance by Funny Side and Jockey Jose Santos. It looked like he had been sealed up on the outside and there was no daylight when he made his turn, but the horse was not to be denied. And another example of why Funny Side has always been the people's choice. What a wonderful, wonderful race. Jose Santos, you saw him smiling from ear to ear as they crossed the finish and galloped out. And I tell you what, he's not the only one. All of us were actually rooting for Funny Side as he was coming down the lane. He's such an easy horse to like. And he's been criticized because he hasn't been winning yet. He's been trying so hard. He was really pulling hard on Jose Santos early, which he often does. That's kind of a characteristic of Funny Side. And so is determination. And look at him fight his way back between horses there to go past Newfoundland. The cliff's edge made a run. Love of money dropped back. But funny side, Chalky Club Gold Cup as a four-year-old derby, a Preakness as a three-year-old, a gelding that hopefully uh, we'll get to see for a long time to come. You know, I thought Gary Stevens, Randy, had timed it perfectly. You could see the cliff's edge. He put his ears back as they were coming into that turn, and I said, here he comes. The edge is powering in. He eyed that stretch at the top, and I said, funny side's finish. But somehow, somehow, Jose got daylight for him, and he powered down. That was a courageous run by funny side. And it was right here a year ago at Belmont Park in the rain when funny side, of course, went for that fateful triple crown run. And Empire Maker spoiled it on an off race track, raining again now at Belmont Park. But uh, the situation not nearly as gloomy around Barkley Tag, the trainer Jose Santos. Look at him, he's still smiling. So we'll come back and uh, we'll hear from the uh, happy winners. And could Funny Side be headed for the classic at the Breeders' Cup? This was a powerful move. Did he make a statement? We shall find out when we continue on ESPN. As you see, he's not very big, only 15 hands. He's a January foal, but just small in stature. Sun King goes in. The 11 is high limit. 
The 12 will be a fleet Alex, the favorite. And then they'll be loaded with Giacomo and going wild. And here to call the Preakness, Tom Durkin. There is the 50 to 1 winner of the Kentucky Derby, Giacomo. And to his outside, the horse that many expect to make the pace here in the Preakness, going wild. 14 ready to go in the 130th Preakness. And and Greeley's Galaxy got squeezed back to the start once again. Wilco comes away in between horses. There goes closing argument with some early speed. Scrappy T down toward the inside. Going wild. He's going to be caught very wide. And High Limit is up there, too. Going wild. Trying to make his way to the inside. But High Limit is there. Now High Limit's got the lead. Going wild alongside second. Scrappy T just in behind lead and running in third. Galloping Grocer fourth on the outside. Closing argument is now fifth. Wilco three wide and sixth. And then it's High Fly who rides the rails with Jerry Bailey. There's seventh now. Sun King is eighth, followed by Greeley's Galaxy. Off poorly, he's now ninth toward the inside. A fleet Alex is racing in tenth. Giacomo is eleventh, just as he did in the Derby. He's well behind in the early going. Then a break of three. Back to long shots. Malibu, Moonshine, followed by Hal's Image on the early trailers. Noble Causeway. The half went in 46 seconds flat. Not that frantic pace we had in the Derby, but this pace is strong nonetheless. And it's High Limit going at it down the back stretch here with Going Wild. High Limit short lead going wild scrappy T under a long hold there right in behind the lead and running third with the half mile to go galloping grocer is asked for more run belly has taken high flight to the outside closing argument trying to pick his way through in between horses Greeley's galaxy is gaining ground with a big move there down toward the rail and then a fleet Alex he's bottled up down toward the inside followed by Sun King Giacomo's got a lot to do and less than three furlongs to do it he's ten lengths behind and caught in some traffic now and scrappy T comes away with the lead but a Fleet Alex is taking a bull run. Oh, Scrappy T blew the turn. And the Fleet Alex Jaffe Rose almost fell out of the saddle. A dramatic occurrence at the top of the stretch. Here is the Fleet Alex who has come on to take the lead. Scrappy T blew the turn. And he's second on the inside. And it's five legs back. Giacomo will manage only to be third. They're coming down to the finish. And in dramatic style, a Fleet Alex who almost fell at the top of the stretch has won the Preakness by five lengths. Scrappy T was second, and finishing third, I believe, was Giacomo and Sun King. Jeremy Rose, an up-and-coming jockey, had a really anxious moment there at the top of the stretch. He's not anxious now. He is euphoric.